Well, good morning, everybody. And the first two things I wanted to check in on this morning was uh, the number of people still without power in parts of Florida, which uh, some of the data suggests that over 2 million customers are still without power. And the second thing is, what's Ian's next move? Ian has been a very challenging system to forecast. And uh, we're looking here late at the latest satellite data early this morning. It's kind of a unique image. You can actually see the center of circulation right here. They kind of rock back and forth on that. Do that again. There it is. And the main uh, convective bands are out ahead of it. And look at the shadow uh, from this really, uh, you know, tall sear shield here. Uh, it's just kind of amazing to be able to see that. So uh, we need to see where Hurricane Ian is going. It is back up to a hurricane. We'll take a look at those maximum winds in just a few seconds here. But I wanted to show you what we're expecting midday today. Sometime between uh, noon and one o'clock this afternoon, Ian will make its fourth landfall. So if you just think about it, uh, first it was in Cuba, then here uh, in the Keys, and then mainland Florida, and now here uh, in parts of the South Carolina coast where hurricane warnings stretch for the entirety of the South Carolina coast. What we're expecting is four to seven feet of storm surge as the winds probably in that um, 80 to 85 mile an hour range do make landfall here. And at the same time, while that's going on, we do have high pressure stretch across the Great Lakes and stretching right down here through parts of the Mississippi Valley. But there is a low that has uh, now emerged in parts of Wyoming and Montana. I'll show you how much rain this one's going to produce in a few moments as well. But let's just keep going with our Hurricane Ian and get the latest updates. So this is the 8 a.m. update from the National Hurricane Center. 85 mile an hour sustained winds puts it at a category one. You can see where they have the... Um, hurricane warnings and expected to just move across North Carolina, kind of stall out and, and produce some very heavy rainfall across parts of the Carolinas as it hits the Appalachian Mountains. Just made a quick kind of view here of how much rain we're expecting over there on the left. Widespread three to five inches of rain is going to be highly probable. And then right here where the hurricane makes landfall, we could see over seven inches of rain in places. On the right hand side, we have the European models forecast for maximum wind gusts. And so you still see here a large area of wind speeds that could be in that 50 to 60 mile an hour range as Ian slowly decays moving over toward the Appalachian Mountains. So a flood threat and a wind threat in parts of North Carolina uh, and South Carolina getting up to Virginia. And uh, the issue here is that given the stage of crops, this could um, really test the stand quality of a lot of different crops grown in this particular area. So let's go ahead and have a look at those two features, uh, the hurricane and the system that's coming through uh, parts of Wyoming and Montana today with the high res uh, NAM model. So we get up here right around noon to one o'clock when we expect the landfall. And at that same time, you'll see that this upper level system here is really struggling to get organized and move out onto the plains. And it's just gonna kind of sit there and spin as Ian uh, by through the day on Saturday spreads its rains possibly as far north as parts of Ohio getting into Pennsylvania but it'll pretty quickly move through parts of the Carolinas so this three to five inches of rain we're talking about it's going to come in about a 12 to, to, to 24 hour time period once Ian makes landfall now the interesting thing about this and we talked about it in last night's in-depth forecast is the position of this high is really starving this system for moisture which means as it attempts to pop out onto the plains, uh, it will likely have very limited ability to produce a lot of rainfall. While Ian is, of course, still continuing to soak parts of the Mid-Atlantic into the Northeast once we get out here until Sunday. So we just look broadly at how much rainfall is expected over the next seven days from the WPC data this morning. And we continue to see that there will be relatively wide open planting windows across a broad section of the mid part of this country. Or not planting harvesting windows. It's been a long week uh, following this hurricane. Uh, harvest windows in this area. Uh, but uh, just to take a look at how this is going to unfold uh, over that longer term, let's go look at the latest European data. So we have seen through Saturday and getting into Sunday. Now, while this system is kind of still here on Sunday morning, there is a deeper load that's going to come into parts of the Hudson Bay, and that's going to help pull this system out, especially when this high pressure cell moves over New England. So here we are Sunday afternoon and evening, working our way into Monday morning, afternoon and evening. And now you see that deeper low. So this high pressure cell comes in, helps to push Ian out. The front will be draped right in through here by Monday. But again, we're not looking at much precipitation out of this. Widely scattered at best early next week. And that front tries to move here and in, in, in through the, um, you know, through the Great Lakes. Now, while that's occurring, there's going to be a pretty good pull on moisture that's going to come through the four corner states. And my next kind of big event I'm watching is this high pressure cell right here. 
You see its position next Thursday morning slides it through parts of Saskatchewan and Manitoba. And then this will drop that high pressure cell down into the upper Midwest, Northern Plains, and eventually in the Midwest by next Friday. And the concern is with another high pressure cell that we're going to see another frost event that's going to come into the northern part uh, here of the United States. But, you know, that gets us out there about a week. If we just look at the next two weeks combined, we're not seeing a lot of precipitation across the country other than, Ian, the load that's currently over Wyoming and Montana today, tomorrow, and then the pull of moisture that's coming through the four corner states. You notice that there's a lot of areas here that may be completely dry, uh, but most locations will likely see just limited chances of precipitation. So that kind of gets us out there two weeks. Let's switch over to an all hazards weather map from this morning. You can still see we have the frost advisories out there. We're, they did extend all the way to parts of Maine, but uh, since the sun has come up and the temperatures have risen, they've taken those off. So what we've got here is tropical storm warnings across much of North Carolina and South Carolina. And then we have on the back side of this stretching from Virginia all the way down to Georgia. These are wind advisories. Along the coast of North Carolina, there is the hurricane warning. And we do have flood watches underneath all of this. But talking about that frost over the next seven days. So this was this morning. OK, same for here. This is this next event coming in next Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's what I'm, we're watching here carefully. So this is how your temperatures are going to evolve uh, over the next seven days. Here's today's highs as we play this forward into Saturday. There's our upper level low over Wyoming, Montana. Here's the cloud cover over Ian, keeping things cool there. And in the middle, we've got warmer conditions and warmth building across the west as well. Into Sunday and now to Monday and Tuesday of next week. So we get this rebound in temperatures across a broad section here of the US while cloud cover and, and rain soaked soil keeps this area cooler and the moisture coming into the four corner states keeps it cooler. But what I'm watching is next Wednesday, here it is, into Thursday. That's the big push of colder air where these overnight lows could get down there touching that 32 degree marker even cooler. And even at this point, October the 6th, this would still be an early frost event, even though we've already seen frost in Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, and points north of there with these last couple of systems. And forecasting frost this fall has been something I've struggled a bit with, uh, seeing some of the more mild forecasts. I forget that we can still touch those temperatures at night. So uh, that's what we've seen here. The latest European model, though, uh, just looking at that five-day sliding window, really resist bringing in deep cold air. Uh, so you do see here's that time period where we go over to the cooler shot of air, the 6th through the 11th right in through here. But it seems to rebound pretty quickly. In other words, if we're going to really pull in some deep, cold, sustained air, uh, it's still going to be quite a ways down the road. And that's what we're talking about in today's report. I provide uh, the latest uh, updates on the September precipitation ranks and give a discussion about those and the temperature ranks as well. And we also have a discussion about the new long range European model. I did that in the in-depth forecast last night. Very uh, consistent here in its performance with what we're expecting for the second half of October into November. And finally, we do provide some context here on the forecast uh, for South America for the next 45 days. And in last night's in-depth report, we also discussed the drought issues going on in Argentina. So I just wanted to pack that all in today's report so you get a chance to read it over the weekend. And uh, we'll talk to you again on Monday. Thank you.